What's up, crafters? It's Sabrina with Minecraft by Sabrina, where our crafts are anything but square. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on creating SVG files. I'm going to do it in both Inkscape and Design Space. But please note, if you're a mobile user, Inkscape is only available for download on a computer. Before we continue, if this is your first time to my channel, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so that you can be notified the next time I post some content. In part one, we'll take a coloring page image and convert it into a full color layered SVG file using Inkscape. The first thing you want to do is go online and find an image. You want to find an image that is clear and large. You can see the size in the bottom corner when you look at your picture. The bigger the image, the more clear your SVG file is going to be converted. You're going to right click on that image and click Save As. You'll give it a name and save your file to your computer. After you've saved your file, we're going to go open a new document in Inkscape and we're going to drag and drop that file into Inkscape. In this import window, you're going to leave all your defaults the same and just click OK. Now our image has been embedded into Inkscape. From here, we're going to convert this image into a layer file. Note the white space around our embedded picture. First thing we're going to do is go to Path and select Trace Bitmap. In the top portion, it says Single Scan. You'll leave the defaults and change the colors to the number 2. Click on Live Preview, select OK, and then you can close your Trace Bitmap window. One thing to note, even if you tried selecting one for your color, it's going to default to two. So close your window, and now your image has been converted. There's no longer any white space around our SVG file. So we'll move that over a little bit. It's going to reveal our original picture under there. We'll right click and select delete on that image. So we've just created a single layer single color SVG file. We're going to save our work by clicking File and Save As and give it a name. Next, let's go ahead and separate these layers. Remember, this is single color, single layer. So this is the equivalent of cleaning up an image in Design Space. So the first thing I do is change the opacity. Now this isn't necessary, but it's helpful in the next steps. So I drop it down to 50 and make it a little bit transparent. Then I'm going to go Path and select Break Apart. Here you can see all the pieces have now been broken apart. If you move that backmost layer, you can see each separate piece. We have now created a multi-layer, still single colored SVG file. So let's save our work and then we're going to give it some color. So in order to color each piece, we need to select each piece and then click on the Color and the Colors panel. If you have more than one piece to convert to the same color, then you can click on each piece by holding down the Control button. And then we'll go ahead and click on the color. In order to combine or weld those like color images, then we can go to Path and select Union. Union is the equivalent to weld in design space. So now we're just going to go ahead and repeat the color and weld steps for each other layer. So we'll do the next is the frosting in blue. We'll give our cherry some red. We'll give our cupcake some tan. And please note, again, there's three layers. So we're going to go to path and union so we can convert that to one layer. Next, we'll select all of our cupcake pieces at the bottom and turn that into brown. Again, it's separate pieces, so we're going to go path and union to convert those into one layer. Last thing is our slices. We want these pieces to be sliced out of our brown layer. So in order to do that, we've selected the brown layer and all of these slices. So we're going to go path and select exclusion. Exclusion is one of the equivalents to slicing. 
in design space. We'll move our back layer back into the background and bring our opacity back up to 100 so we can see it in clear, vivid color. I didn't miss any layers. I've colored my image. So now we are completely done. We've gone from converting a coloring page image into a full color layered SVG file. So we're going to save this file. Next thing is to upload it into Design Space. So in Design Space, we're going to open a new project, click Upload in the left panel, Upload in the middle, and then we're going to drag and drop that file. Our image instantly comes available. You'll name it, add some tags if you want, and select Save. There's our file. We'll go ahead and click on our picture and select Insert Image. And here it is in Cricut. You see we have our seven layers, all colored, all separated, all welded, all ready to send to Matt. All you have to do is size it to your project. So part two, we're going to do the exact same thing going from this coloring page to a multicolor image, but we're going to do it strictly using design space. So we're going to open a new project in Design Space, select Upload from the panel, and Upload again. We're going to go ahead and drag and drop that file that we found on Google. I'm going to select Moderately Complex and select Continue. And I'm going to take my magic wand from up in the corner and only click on the black outlines. So that's the, if you click on the back stem, it's going to take out almost everything, all your black lines touch. And then I also have these black lines in here to click each one individually. After you've selected all of your black, you're going to go ahead and click continue. Select that you want to save it as a cut image, name it and give it tags as you would like, and go ahead and click save. Here our image has inserted. We're going to go ahead and click that image and insert it into our project. And now we can see our single layer, single color SVG file. Let's go ahead and break it into layers. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to select the contour button at the bottom. So we're going to click contour. And then we're going to select this button that says hide all contours. When we hide all contours, you'll notice in the back, it only leaves the black square that's in the background. So I'm going to click on the cupcake in order to reveal the cupcake. And then I'm going to click on the black square so that it eliminates the square. So the only thing that should be visible is the cupcake base. The reason why I had to do it in that fashion is only one, at least one object must remain visible. So we're going to start with our base as our background, and that's going to be where I start. And then before you close out, you want to count how many different layers do you need. I know we already need seven. That's what we did in the last one. So I need one for black, two for red, three for white, four for blue, five for tan, six for yellow, seven for brown. So now that I've decided how many I need, I'm going to close out of contour and I'm going to click duplicate. I want to duplicate this as many times as I need. I already have one, so I need six more. So I'm going to just click that six times, select all, and then I'm going to align center them. So after I click select all, I'll click on align and click on center. Now they're all nice and centered for me. Now we're going to pick each layer and we're going to apply a color to it. So we'll pick our first layer and apply red, blue, tan, yellow, brown, black, white. Then we're going to pick each color one at a time and we're going to select contour. We're going to click on all the pieces that should be this color and we're going to click them so that they show. Then we're going to click the cupcake base 
so that that one hides. So basically we're flip-flopping them. We're gonna close our contour box to save it and then repeat the hide and show on all other layers. So here we have the blue layer where we only have the frosting visible. We have the tan layer where the three cupcake portions are visible. We have the bow where the five pieces in the bow are visible. And last we have our brown. We have now created a multicolor, multi-layer cut file in design space. I call it a cut file versus an SVG file because this cannot be saved and it cannot be shared like the file that we created in Inkscape that we actually saved it and uploaded it into design space. This, we, you cannot move this. You can't take it and send it to somebody else. It's only usable to cut out of your Cricut machine. Part three. Now we're going to add an offset or a border to our image. So we already have our cut file. We're gonna add these additional highlights to the background. First, we're gonna do it in Inkscape. So the first thing we're going to do is select our backmost layer, which in this case is the black layer. Then we're going to go to Path and select Linked Offset. This is going to make a node appear. It looks like a little diamond. Now the first thing we want to do is uncheck the node snapping option here in the upper left corner. And then we want to select a color. I do this first because it helps me see my outline in the next step. So after I've selected my color, I'm going to click, hold, and drag the node upwards so then I can stretch it and reveal an offset. Now it isn't a cut path yet. We have to go to path and select object to path. And now you're gonna see that it makes nodes all over the entire offset. If you want to make more than one offset, you would repeat these steps and then save this and upload it into Design Space. A few things to note, in Inkscape, you can make as many offsets as you want, and you can also vary how wide each one is. So here we have a second offset. Now we're gonna do an offset border using Design Space. So to make the offset, we're going to use the backmost layer, which in this case is the black layer. So we're gonna hide every other layer by clicking on the eye next to that layer. Then we're gonna select the black layer and change the fill from no fill to print. After we've selected print, we'll click on make it at this window, we'll simply select continue. And here we're gonna send it to our printer. Now note, your machine does not have to be connected in order to do this step. So I'm gonna click on select printer. My printer is going to be set up to Microsoft print to PDF. Yours might be different. It's going to be whatever your system is default set up with a print to PDF option. Then I'm going to leave my bleed on. I know it's on because it's green and then we'll go ahead and select print. Because this is saving as a PDF, we need to give it a name and click save. And then we need to cancel out of the map. So I'm going to select cancel and it's gonna ask, are you sure you want to cancel? Yes. And then once again, cancel. Now that we've saved our PDF file, we need to open our PDF and use the snipping tool to take a screen print of it. And then we'll save that print. We need to do this because Design Space does not allow for a PDF type file to be uploaded. So we'll save a picture of it. Click on Save. Now we'll open a new project in Design Space, click on Upload from the panel, Upload in the middle, and we'll drag and drop our image. Once again, I'm gonna select Moderately Complex and select Continue. And we'll clean up the image this time with the magic wand by selecting all the white spaces around my image. 
go ahead and select continue. We'll save this as a cut image, give it a name as well as some tags, and select save. My image has uploaded. I'm going to click on my image and go ahead and insert this into my project. Now that our offset is in design space, I'm going to click on that offset and apply a color to it. Then I'm going to adjust the size and center layer it behind my cupcake base. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. I find the best way to go about it is to make it the same size as the base layer and then go up from there. Now, if you want to add more than one offset, then you would go ahead and repeat the process to create another one. Otherwise, if you're done, then you can unhide all of your layers from the beginning by clicking on the eye again and reveal those. So a few things to note. You cannot control how wide your offset is going to be like you can in Inkscape. Because you aren't physically stretching this image, you are just using a bleed function, it's going to be what it is. Another thing to note is it isn't always very crispy. Um, sometimes it just doesn't make a very clean path. And well, I guess that is the limitation that we have when we're using Design Space. When you click make it and you send your project to the mat, each layer is going to have a corresponding mat in that color. You will follow the prompts on your screen and send to cut on your desired material. This is an example of a project that was made using the SVG file that was created. Each layer was cut on a different color. I cut the outline and the base on cardstock and every other layer was cut in vinyl and then all applied on top of each other. So that's all I got for you guys today. I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this content so I can keep bringing you more. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with a crafter friend and hashtag quarantine training.